All right. Ian, we like talking about collectors that we find a stash of things, whether it's good old our pal Tim Atwood or other collectors that we know they're out there. We know you're out there with a bunch of cool stuff. That's right. Uh, unfortunately, though, eventually, sometimes you pass away while you still own a lot, a lot of stuff. In this case, 97-year-old man, Uncle Jimmy. I have an Uncle Jimmy I'll get into in a bit. Uh, left the collection to his kids. Millions of dollars oh, worth of, cards. of baseball cards and memorabilia. This is amazing. It's amazing. <clears throat> so, th- this collection from Uncle Jimmy. I'm going to the ESPN, uh, ESPN article. Uh, Boot, Boot in New Jersey. His name was James Missioni. Born, in, born and died in the same place. Wow. Wow. How often do you hear about that anymore? Wow. Never married. Never became a father. Never owned a car. His, I guess his love was just baseball. Yeah. He walked by. He walked to nearby jobs as a high school custodian and a chemical factory worker, leaving a small working class town only when he called to serve in Europe in the last three years of World War II. Die hard Yankee fan but also of Jackie Robinson. Spent most of his life curating a treasure trove of baseball cards that experts believe to be one of the most extraordinary private collections in the hobby's history. So what Jimmy did besides these, uh, besides just having a massive collection was he would take cards and he would mail them out to baseball players and just see if he would get a hit on them autographing it and sending it back so he has an extensive collection of autographed cards um from like blue Gehrig, babe ruth um I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that were uh mentioned but he's got tons of them and, and a lot of them are signed yeah, that's what I'm saying. He sent out. I, he sent them out and got but them signed. It's, it's one thing to say, yeah, I have a, a Babe Ruth 1933. Was it Gaudi card? He's got six of them, yep. and they're signed, all signed, and they're in good, like they're in great condition for being cards that are 80 years old. Like this is incredible. Like like uh, this stuff comes up. Like if this was like in in the 70s, you'd be like, okay, it's not that old. These cards aren't worth that much right. compared. To, like these cards, some of these cards are going to fetch like a like a million bucks potentially just one of them like this is this is historic stuff yep shortly after his death his nieces and nephews ventured into missoni's attic and found binders separated by decade and packed with autographs including six ruth cards from the famous 1933 gaudi set orlando who helped to officially grade the cards for professional sports authenticator estimates that those half dozen ruth cards together are worth up to one million in total jesus and in this day and age maybe more like these are going to go to auction it says an auction over four weeks all this stuff like, people get excited when this stuff comes out like this, like a big collection from one guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know much about the sports card world. I know I know that anything after the mid the early mid eighties is, is worthless at this point. This is the um, sort of stuff that deserves to have like a name attached to the collection. Yes. Like this is the Uncle Jimmy collection. This is the, the Uncle Jimmy it. collection. I yes. Don't, I don't care so much about the Carolina collection when it comes to NES stuff, but like. I think we like our we like our pal Dane, but yeah. I, no, I, I mean he's a nice guy. But that but saying, that I, wasn't I, treasure I, trove stuff, right? This is treasure trove stuff. That's yes. the difference. Exactly. This is stuff that this is once in a lifetime finds where you're never going to find this stuff again from someone. Who knows? Maybe let's see. Let's see. Pat Math, ninety seven. He was born in nineteen twenty three, so he was a kid. He was ten years he's old, old when he buying these these, Babe yeah. Ruth cards, like having these cards when he was like that's amazing. It's unfortunate when you think about it, there's not many World War II veterans left alive. Um, no. My, my grandfather was, and he was born in 1917, so he would be 103 by now. But um, the when fact that... he pass away a, couple, a few years ago? 19, uh, 1911. Uh, 2011, right. he passed away. He, so he passed away right after, literally three days after he turned uh, 97. He passed away. Rest in peace, Uncle uh, Grandpa. Grandpa Sally. Uncle Sally, no. No, I didn't have an Uncle Sally, but Uncle Sally sounds better. Um... So this is a guy that was a baseball fan and he accumulated, this is the only way this happens, you accumulate as you grow up and get these things and you're yeah. a fan. Like, oh, Jackie Robinson, I'm going to go down to the corner store and buy the card. Right. And somehow they'll keep them in mint condition for decades, like, or close to mint, like, it's incredible. Um, when you look at the picture of these, you're like, what? He mailed them away, got them signed, came back, and they're still better than, like, probably 98% of the ones out there. 
Like, and they were just, they, and they were just kept in like binders, like the binder, you know, that put the cars in the little binder pockets. Yeah, and that's it. Yep, it's absolutely, it's absolutely crazy. One of his nephews, Peter Missoni, says he did not collect this, thinking someday it would be worth a lot of money. His intent clearly was to do this collection and retain it for the game of baseball. He 100% <laughs> knew that he had stuff that nobody else had, and that his legacy really is giving this stuff back to the game of baseball. So. Yeah, it's interesting. He he had to have known he had this money, but what was he doing? He he spent his life curating a fantastic collection to get it. I don't know. Shortly after his death, the family spent days cataloging Missioni's vast collection. And thank thank God that this stuff was kept in the attic. It wasn't destroyed by the humidity in Jersey or whatever, yeah. what have you. Maybe it was a drier area. I don't know. Uh they identified key reference key reference points from his life. They found pins that captured his support for Robinson, the sport's first African American player. Um, well, MLB's first one. Uh, they they learned that Missioni attended a charity game in 1942 that saw Ruth come out of retirement and homer off Walter Johnson. That's amazing. That's that's literally like history. That mm-hmm. wow, well, 42. He was way over the hill by then. Obviously, Ruth. Uh, they sifted through old newspaper clippings and noticed that one of them was autographed by Mel Ott, Hall of Famer. Uh, they uncovered a le- letter written to Joe DiMaggio. They found the original envelopes that contained the autograph cards that are now worth the fort. They found the envelopes, envelopes. that were sent. Yep. Holy shit. This is going to go for so much money. He, he did not collect this thinking someday it'd be worth a lot of money. Because was- these weren't worth money. Like, they weren't. Um, his intent clearly was to do this collection and retain it for the game baseball. He 100% knew that he had stuff nobody else has. And his legacy really is giving this stuff back to the game of baseball. There you have it. I mean, obviously some people are going to think who cares baseball cards, but just in terms of collective, almost everyone probably age of 35, 40 or older collected some sort of sports car in their yeah, life. If you, if, don't, if you don't like baseball cards, um, just think about this story as anything that would, I mean, it, it the, the story here is that something was collected and kept in this good a condition for this long, Yeah, you know, by someone who was basically doing it just to do it. For the, for the love of it. Yeah, for the not, love of not it. Not thinking exactly. about, not thinking about... Like a Tim Atwood, nothing about in the future that the statements might be worth, all, all six might be worth, you know, half a million dollars put together sure. in, in this market. I'm just going to do it. Um, so what, where's this auction? And again, let's see. It's, it's gonna, it started on Sunday and it's going for four weeks. Is there that much stuff? Well, they're just, uh, they're just uh, doing it solely. Um, Wheatland Auction Services doing three, oh, three different auctions. The first begin, began on Sunday at seven. I'm going to put this up. I want to see what some of these have gone for yet here. Let's see. The Uncle the Uncle Jimmy collection. That's how it's called. Oh, okay. So let's that's, see. That's the right name for it. So I guess number two starting. Okay. The second one, they're doing it um, looks like once a month. They're really. Wow. Is that is that. A, wow. He has tobacco cards too. Oh, wow. Is that, is that his lot or they're just showing a bunch of stuff? Okay. So. The bidding started. Oh, you get a month. It's going to be a month, and then I guess it might be live bidding at the end, because right now you can bid on, uh, on on stuff here. He's got a he's got a 1909 Ty Cobb card, sitting there, Jesus. just sitting there, you know. Okay, some of these are beat up. Not all of these are in great condition, um, but it, it it won't matter for some of these. If you have an autographed Babe Ruth card, he's got he's got multiple ones. Some of these are the same card. Like this is, this is nuts. When you look at this stuff. He's got he's got a he's got almost complete sets of cards for auction. 1948 Bowman base the full set for 48 Bowman, which is like one of the earliest Jesus. I think the post war cards that they came out with, I believe. Um and it's only missing six cards. Mostly moderate to high grade. The whole set. <laughs> Christ. A lot of 47 1949 Bowman cards. So these got graded after his after his kids got him, obviously. He, right. he didn't. He wasn't a guy that got this stuff graded at the time. Graded Joe DiMaggio rookie cards. Holy crap. All right, well, check it out. If you're a baseball, go to Wheatland Auctions. <laughs> that sounds like they're just... That sounds like they're auctioning wheat. I don't know. <laughs> 1928. Babe Ruth exhibit card. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. There's pins. Frank used to have some pins, but they weren't that old here. Um, 63 Mickey Mantle tops plaque premium. I didn't know they had plaques back then for sale. Okay, 
All right, I'm going to stop rambling. Check out Uncle Jimmy's set. I have an Uncle Jimmy, Ian. Hopefully this doesn't get back to him. Uncle Jimmy has... I have the list right over there on a little sticky of all the comic books he has oh, from the 60s. Oh, yeah, you've told me about Uncle Jimmy. We're talking years of runs of Avengers, Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, like three years in a row. Yeah. My father, though, says he has a claim to some of those, especially the Fantastic Forces. Those are my comics. But my uncle is holding on to them. Really? And we're talking Fantastic Four from like number 42 to like 70. And they're all like very fine condition at least. Most uh, of them. Like, especially the important uh, trifecta 48, 49, 50, the Galactus Silver Surfer uh, trilogy issues. And the Amazing Spider-Mans uh, start from like 32 and go to like 58, 59. So that's like, that's the John Romita era that Junior that I'm like, ah, uh, excuse me, Senior, John Romita. My favorite Spider-Man artist. So we're talking the Green Goblin getting unmasked as Osborne. That's the first Romita ones, 39 and 40. First Kingpin, Spider-Man No More issue number 50. These are some key issues. First, like, appearance of, of some of the minor villains, like like Shockers in there and things. And my uncle has them all. And I, I, di I did put boards on them and, and polybagged them, like, 15, 20 years ago. You did? So <laughs> I, yes, because they weren't. They were just stacked up. Like, like they were... I was like, I got to protect them. So... Uncle Jimmy, if you're listening, my Uncle Jimmy, please let me take control of some of these at some point. And and some <laughs> of them let me take control. And some of them deserve to be graded. Like some of these comics, in, in that condition, thinking back, some of those issues are worth thousands and thousands of dollars because they are high grade. They're like sevens and eights. Some of them are some of these Silver Age key issues. There. That's all. There's Avengers. There's not many X Men. There's only a few X Men, but Avengers, Fantastic Four, Amazing Spider Man. Um, there's a few others, but they're mostly they're mostly Marvel ones. There, it's like 120 comics at least. At least, it's insane. There. Yeah. So they kept on. Or my or my dad will steal them from you. The Fantastic Four ones. All right, moving on.